Join us for Ruby Reactions. Get Ruby Volume 8 Reactions early on our Patreon. Also be invited on the Tooncaster podcast to talk about Ruby with Matt, Tat, and Kat. Visit us and find things all Ruby at patreon.com slash all ages of geek. Overall, overall, my friends, this is, this is going to be one hell of a fucking series. I have an entire page written out with this. Now, something I want to tell you about Ruby in general is Ruby in general is basically like filled with so much, not even just lore, but because it's only like 15, 16, even to 20 minutes, um, there's so much to talk about. And because so much happens within the 14 minutes, like the good example is just same thing with like the Dragon Prince. Like the Dragon Prince is around like 20 plus minutes, but there's so much happening because it's like they're so short like seasons, you know, like there was only like in book one through book three, there was only nine episodes each. So same thing with this, there's only 14 chapters within the volume. So I'm just like, they shove so much like information in each and every single one of the episodes. Now to begin, what is with the beginning with the whole scrubbing? I really want to go back into that and try to understand what that scrubbing was. That that took up about like a, almost like a minute worth of the animation in the beginning. So I'm just like, what was that? I don't know what that was referencing. But then it goes right back into Cinder and Neo. And Neo was introduced to Salem. And all this stuff is happening. And you're just like, it's starting with the villains. Now... As you guys may know, if you're new, you might not know this, but I worked with books for five years of my life before doing anything with YouTube. I used to work with publishers, I used to work with editors, agents, I used to work with a production company overall uh, when it came to doing children's books, and then we also got to talk to people who did young adult fiction. So I was in the literature space for, for a very, very long time. So when I do my analysis on things, I go in and I'm like, I get down to the nitty gritty. Even if there's like a tree, I'm going to talk about a tree. Even if there's like some kind of character trait, I'm going to talk about that character trait. Because that's just how I do. That's how that's how I roll here. Now, the thing is, is now that we're realizing that it's opening with the villains, usually when you get something that's open with the villains, you know dark shit's about to fucking happen. And the reason I say, and also, if you're new, just get ready to um, get used to the cursing, because I'm from fucking New Jersey, and you're going to get, you're going to deal with this accent, you're going to deal, that, that's just how we roll here. Um, again, when you're from, if you're from New Jersey, you 100% agree that cursing just comes second nature to you. Yeah, deal with it. Anyway, so the thing is, too, is um, Cinder being called, like, the vessel for the maiden to get to obtain these powers. Like, it's all being coming closer together with how, um, even how Salem was all like, you know, I'm gonna be basically in a way, like, she's basically raising Cinder to be this vessel. And now knowing that Penny has this powers, there's red flags all over Penny. I mean, they're not even just looking for the relic anymore. They're looking for the maiden, which is now Penny, which is now with Team Ruby, which is now... Red flag central. So it's it's scaring the shit out of me because the thing is, is when a red flag raises on a character, bad things fucking happen. And when that red flag raises even higher, as we saw Apira and everybody else, death might happen. And that's why I'm so fucking concerned. Now, Salem keeps mentioning trust. And to give you an example, we just, because we, we also do Naruto uh, reactions. So we just got to a certain part in Naruto and Orochimaru is saying things to Kabuto about trust. When a villain says something like, I trust you, it's as if they're giving you this, this ability to be like, ooh, this, this head honcho trusts me. Ooh, what are they going to give me in return? Like that kind of stuff. So saying that you trust somebody, it makes them feel better about themselves and it gives them more of a connection and bond with you. Um, the other thing too is, again, starting with the villains, opening with the villains. What does that mean? Well, that fucking means that bad things are going to be happening this volume and when bad things happen this volume oh god because we have to go back and forth and really realize certain things about this and again i'm going to make theory videos i'm going to go back to my theory videos and then re-react them and say you were wrong you were right i'm going to be making analysis videos and to know it started with the villains that is a big red flag huge red flag saying that things are going to go wrong this season um the thing is too is i wrote down penny red flag um when it comes to bringing things into this this motion, you know, like making everything start to flow, all this kind of stuff. You know darn well bad things are going to happen throughout the volume. So it, it's, it's, again, the first half, the first few minutes, you get to see all the villains. Not all of them, but you got to see the main, you know, main villains like Salem and everyone. They're plotting stuff. And she's like, oh, so the plan's already in motion. I'm just like, what does she mean by that? The plan is already in motion, which means 
bad shit's about to fucking happen to our main cast. And even with the OP showing how dark it may be, the OP is showing us that there's bad fucking shit about to occur. Uh, so another thing, too, is Oscar being alone. I always thought that for the end of Volume 7 that Oscar was going to be separated from them, not be reunited, and he was going to be going off on his own to go on an adventure to find out about the origins of Ozpin, to find out the or origins of Ozma, to just go on his own. Now, that's something I really wanted to see, um, and I wish that they went that direction to keep Oscar on his own because it would have been interesting to see him explore that side outside of the team to be more independent. Um, if they're, I wonder how they're going to show his independence moving forward with this. But again, I really wish it was like Oscar alone and not being reunited with Team Ruby. Again, when you're trying to tell a story, maybe the decision that they made for that reason was probably because... Um, animation time or budget or whatever it may be but when it comes to um oscar i really want to see whether he's alone or gets separated again from them some kind of form of independence that he has with he's discovering more about ozma and ozpin and dealing with these abilities that he has and coming to terms with them because as we saw in volume seven when he did that with ironwood that moment was very very fucking powerful so the whole thing with oscar going alone on this adventure and being separated that would have been really interesting to me so i'm wondering what are they going to do about that in the upcoming episodes or upcoming chapters you know i want to see more of oscar on his own and making decisions on his own as a leader that he is bound to become um and also another thing being reunited with ruby and everybody i'm wondering how these teams are going to be working because it's not this is not about in a way it's about everyone being divided this volume it's not being about uniting people while they are saying we should be uniting people which is something i and all ages keep really stands for um at the same time you have to see the repercussions you have to see how this war is separate people so it's going to probably show us the different sides of things like Ren and Nora there's going to be a huge moment between them as we see the relationship is even referenced in the fucking OP which means that there's going to be a lot of shit even going and drama there's going to be a lot of drama going on between their relationship like they just got together they've been fine and now it's like they disagree with each other so that all this shit's about to bound to happen and destroy the relationship which I really don't hope happens because I do love them as a couple but also at the same time this is needed to show us that even if you are with somebody your views can differ from them and how are you going to handle it how are you going to unite together to make it fucking work another thing too is um the hell did I write here oh Oh, okay, so Nora, oh, Nora knew to show love towards Oscar. She didn't, you know, instead of, like, freaking out or doing certain things or, like, even, like, punching him in the face or hugging him or being at the, the typical Nora self, like, Oscar was like this, she hugged him. So she knew in at this time it was not to be like typical Nora. She showed this type of love for him by saying like, okay, now's not the time to make a fuss about anything because right now the world is, as we know it, is ending. Um, another thing too is separated from the adults. Now I always say this. I've worked with literature for five years, so I, I just I've seen this. It's a very huge trope in young adult fiction. Ruby is now becoming more young adult and more adult like because the characters are getting older. So when you have that going on, especially for older young adult fiction, you want to separate them from the adults yes we see penny's father we see him there but that doesn't count right now because there's also red flags on him um being separated from the adults is important when you have teenage or old, a little older characters because they're trying to find themselves in the world so usually when you tell a ya fiction novel or any type of story you want to separate those adults now mind you mentor characters are much different than adult characters mentor characters are like master roshi from dragon ball which we're also doing dragon ball reactions on patreon uh, what else we have like mentor characters like akashi a uh, mentor character so it's like those they are adults but there's going to be a given time when even those mentor characters they they don't have to be killed off, but they have to be separated from the main cast that are teenagers because those teenagers are going to have to fight adulthood and see how they handle that adulthood. So the same thing is happening here where they're separating them from Crow. Crow is, in a way, a parental and or mentor figure who Ruby does look up to. And where is he right now? He is in the Slammers. So the thing is, is with that, being separated from the adults, very important to know that now it's showing us that within the storytelling that Ruby is becoming much more adult rather than young adult. And also at the same time it's important for us to separate ourselves from the main cast that may be adults another thing to them saying we want to help everyone but we have to help this person in this place and so we're getting divided here which again is not a bad thing because during this time we're going to find how the other characters interact with each other interesting to see how they are separated from one another but at the same time i'm wondering how they're going to deal with this how their relationships are going to be torn apart from this how their relationships are going to be in a way just shown and like that's something i'm personally looking forward to um another thing too is yang series 
seriousness. Usually Yang is very like, mm, strong, tough, this, that. This scene, she was very like, she was still her tough self, but at the same time, she showed much more seriousness. Like the seriousness in her tone, the seriousness overall. It was like, what the fuck? Like it was different for Yang. And Yang even disagreeing with Ruby, like saying, I love you, Ruby, but we got to do this. And then them being, and, and no, and even Ruby arguing with Yang to see Ruby on to take a stand and saying, this is not pointless. To see her growing up in this way instead of being somebody who's all like, yeah, let's have fun. Woo! And to see her literally just go and like say it's not pointless and scream. This is going to probably be a lot of growth for Ruby. And I can see a lot of growth from Yang and then their sisterhood. Uh, again, we've seen a lot with their sisterhood before, but we've never seen like a central focus point. Um, some of the relationships, what I really want to see is like even like Yang and Weiss bonding, uh, Blake and Ruby bonding. Like we've seen like Weiss and Ruby bonding. Um, obviously, I'm a shipper of Bumblebee, so we've seen that. But I want to see like the outside of the same type of people bonding with each other. I want to see even like Ruby and Nora bonding, Nora and Penny bonding, all this type of different bonding going on, which I think we're going to probably see within this volume. Um, another thing too is uh, follow lead and not work out. Well, Yang basically just said to Ruby, like, you know, we, we're following your lead, but it's it's not working out. Because here's the thing, when you remember when Yang was like, no more lies, no more lies, and Ruby kept telling those lies, I think she's a little salty over it, which is okay. And you can disagree with your siblings. I mean, me and my siblings, we disagree, we fight, and then we get over it. That's just how it fucking works. And if you're, if you're from New Jersey, you know you get over things. First, it's like a fight is usually like, fuck you, get out of my fucking life, you piece of shit. And then five seconds later, like, yeah, you want to go to Wendy's or something? Like, It's like that type of relationship I feel like they also have where it's like they're going to fight, they're going to disagree, it might be over a few course of the days, but then they're going to get over it and everything will be fine. So I want I want to see that sisterhood bond between these two because as a sister I can probably point out certain things that is true and certain things that aren't so anyone who is a sister you actually or like any type of sibling you, you kind of agree with me where it's like you fight then you get over it so it's not like their relationship is ruined forever um, another thing too is being the two sides no 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 not even just that penny the two sides yeah them being divided yeah there's like basically you think about it it's like in a way um you know, with Avengers, with the Captain America Civil War, all that kind of stuff. That it's that's probably where we're going with this. In this, where it's like, hey, I agree with Cap, I agree with Iron Man. It's like, and then we're gonna have two sides, and people are gonna fight each other over it. I can see that. I I actually said that in uh, one of the theory video, not theory videos, but like the reaction to theory afterwards. Like, it's probably gonna be in that leading in that direction. So. I'm like, was I right? Sometimes I like being right. So that's not that's not as bad as being me being right about, oh, a character's gonna fucking die, and then they end up dying, and I'm just like, yeah, I felt that out, because no. No. Another thing, too, is Penny saying, I'll go, and then her bur her eyes burning like that. This is a character that is fun and quirky and all about, woo, we're gonna have fun with you, and now it's all like, what the fuck? Like, she, every character that is become, that was once quirky and fun and happy is now becoming so serious. And that's the thing that goes to show us that even if you're positive about sometimes, sometimes positivity, sometimes positivity and fun and all this stuff, it does not work. Sometimes, <coughs> oh my God. Sometimes, oh my God, I'm get passionate about this. Sometimes you need to have like all this other shit going on where it's like you have to take a stand against something. So you don't take a stand against something, sometimes bad things are gonna fucking happen and then all these other shit's gonna go down and it's gonna get even fucking worse. So Penny, kudos to you for taking a stand. My girl's taking a stand. I'm so fucking happy to see that. Another thing too is Iron Motherfucking Wood. About that whole scene. Perfection. Now, when he called Penny, and then, yeah, when Ruby's all like, she with us, she ain't coming towards you. I was like, okay, that's that's bad enough. So Ironwood being heated as he is, everyone being in the hospital, winter being heated, not heated, he being healed and everything, all these other characters being healed, he's rational. He's like, my team is fucking dying. I have no idea where Ruby is. She's stealing the maiden. Salem's fucking coming. It's fine, but it gets worse. So a few things. One, he says to Winter, which Winter right now in, in a state that she is, pay attention to her hand when her hand starts shaking. This is a woman who is very powerful, who is known for her strength, who is very outspoken about that strength. And now right now she feels vulnerable because her hand is like this. She's like in a state where she's like beat, beaten up. She's confused. 
She doesn't know why her plans didn't work. Her sister is eaten out of there. She's upset about that. Her father's fucking arrested. But the thing is, is with all this stuff going on, Ironwood says something to her. I don't know what I would have done without you. And then it gets worse from there. Now, at first, you're like, oh, that's cute. That's nice. Great. You know, Winter's loved by somebody. You know, she's, she's going to get support. Maybe she'll be able to help Ironwood. Maybe he won't get any fucking worse. So Ironwood suddenly just shoots somebody. Like, what the... Point blank, shooting somebody, and you're all like, what the fuck? What the? First it's like, I don't want no, James! What the fuck are you doing, James? Shut the fuck up, bitch. And the other woman's all like, so I don't know if he's going to capture that woman because I don't think he's going to kill her. I think he just killed the guy. Um, I don't I don't know if it was just because he had more angst with him. I'm not sure. But I think he's going to like probably like cap like held her captive somewhere because you know she's a witness to this unless she's gonna join sides with him because now that that guy and you know obviously something's gonna happen with this woman and i, th I feel like she's actually either team rubies are gonna find more about it and then they're gonna see that james actually went and killed somebody you know it's fine you know yeah it's fine james you know you know james you know it's fine because you, you want to know something james you want to know something buddy you know, I've been saying since a late volume four that you're gonna lose your shit one day. I've been saying since late volume four that this man, that this fucking man, it, it needs a fucking spa, okay? That this man needs something to, like, uh, rest his nerves. Because right now, since volume four, I'm like, one day he's gonna lose his shit. And look what he's doing now. He lost his goddamn shit. And that shit being lost is him killing somebody. Oh, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes, man. Shoots him. Fucking shoots him. We happy about that, folks? We good? We, we, we satisfied with where James is going? Remember James back in when we first met him? I think it was volume two. I can't really reconcile about that right now because I'm, I'm stressed as fuck. The hopeful James, the inventor, the man who believed in his military power. All that kind of shit. Remember that James? Remember, remember how, how hopeful he was? I remember him. And now see him like this where he's fucking shooting somebody up like that. You're like, ah, uh, whoop, you're fucking man. You just, you're, you're, you're sanity. He's eating on out of there. Because here's the thing. Like I always said, I never hated Ironwood. I just think this is a man that has gone way too fucking far, who has been lied to, who has been not being able to know about, you know, Salem, all this other shit that's happening. You know, what would you do? What would you fucking do if all this stuff was on your shoulders? I, I, I wouldn't go murder somebody, but he feels, he feels desperate. And, uh, it's a big fucking concern. So, I want to know your guys' thoughts about all this. Um, as you guys do know, um, every single week, along with our reactions, you will also be getting a theory video over on our Patreon. Um, you guys will get, be also be getting the analysis video cut up and uploaded onto our YouTube channel. Um, again, we're going to be making sure that you guys don't get spoiled. So, please, if you haven't seen Ruby already... Be sure to watch it from the beginning. You can watch it on Rooster Teeth's website. Um, as we got, as you guys do know, we like to support the original source and everything. But overall, I want to know your thoughts. I hope you guys have an amazing day. You stay weird. You stay wonderful. You stay awesome. And until the next video, embrace your fangirl, fanboy, and fanboy -son. every single day. Bye, guys. Red vs. Blue reactions are back. So not only will Kat be reacting to this, but Tat and Matt will be reacting to Red vs. Blue. But it's coming back and it's on Patreon.com, where it says All Ages Geek. Reactions that are recorded on Patreon will eventually be uploaded to the channel months later. So yes, that means that you can get the reactions early on Patreon, months in advance. How many months? Yes.